A very good morning to all of you, my dear children. In my previous video, I have discussed about the flower, different parts of the flower, then estivation and andresium, the different parts of the andresium. In this video, I would like to discuss gynesium, the female reproductive whole, it, different parts and the placentation under the chapter morphology of flowering plants. Without any further ado, let's get started. Gynesium. Gynesium is the female reproductive hole of the flower and it is the innermost hole. It consists of one or more carpels. The carpels are also known as pistil. Each carpel is made up of style, stigma and the ovary. Ovary present at the base within which ovules are present. Then long elongated structure, the style and the sticky stigma which receives pollen grains. If more than one carpels are present, then on the basis of their uh, attachment, whether they are free or fused together, carpels are of two types. One is apocarpus gynosium. If more than one carpel is present and the carpel, carpels are free from each other, then this type of gynosium is called apocarpus gynosium as we find in lotus, rose, etc. Then the next one is syncarpus gynosium. In this type, more than one carpel is present, but here the carpels are fused together. Example, mustard, tomato, etc. After fertilization, ovules change into seeds and the ovary matures into fruit. This slide shows the different parts of the flower and also the types of gynesium. Ls of the flower, here we find the outermost hole, ovary. Outermost hole is the calyx, individual segment sepal, then the corolla, individual segment petal, then the gynosium consists of stamens, maybe one or many. Here uh, the stamens are many and then the gynosium that is ovary, style and the sticky stigma. Ovary, style and stigma within the ovary ovules are present and uh, what we have learned we have learned that if more than one carpels are present and if the carpels are free from each other then it is called apocarpus gynesium and what is syncarpus gynesium syncarpus gynesium that more than one pistil is present but they are fused together. Here you can see that is two ovary but one style that is the fused, right? Now floral formula is very important to describe the different parts of the flower. Actually, with respect to the mother axis in different holes that uh, in different circles, the different holes are drawn. Uh, outermost hole uh, circle represents calyx then the second one, second most circle, that second innermost circle that represents uh, corolla, then andresium and then the gynesium. So, if we observe the floral formula, we can understand the structure of a flower. I will describe now. Before that, I would like to discuss placentation. What is placentation? Before that, we have to know what is Placenta. Do you know what is placenta? Placenta is the fat cushion like tissue which attaches ovules to the ovary. And the ovules may be many and the arrangement of ovules within the ovary also varies. So, the arrangement of ovules within the ovary is called placentation. On the basis of arrangement, placentation mainly are of 
five types. First one that is marginal. What is that? In this type, placenta forms a ridge along the ventral suture of the ovary. Forms a ridge along the ventral suture of the ovary. And the ovules are born on this ridge forming two rows as we find in P. Right? So, if we draw the diagram, we find that here it placenta form forms a ridge along the ventral suture of the ovary and the ovules are arranged in two rows. Right? Example P. Now the next one is axial placentation. What is axial placentation? When the placenta is axial and ovules are attached to the central axis in a multilocular ovary. What does it mean? Locule means chamber. Multilocular means many locules. So here in this diagram we can see three locules are there. Three locules are there and uh, ovules are attached to the central axis. So this type of placentation is called axial placentation. Example China rose tomato. This diagram also represents axial placentation, right? Now the next type is parietal placentation. Parietal from the name we can understand that is here the ovules are attached towards the periphery, towards the inner side of the ovarian wall at towards the periphery. That is the ovarian wall, peripheral ovarian wall and ovules are attached to its inner side, right? So when the ovules develop on the inner wall of the ovary or on peripheral part, it is called parietal placentation. Ovule is one chambered, but it can be two chambered due to the formation of false septum. Example, RG moon. So here we can see that is the ovules are present towards the periphery on the inner side of the ovarian wall, right? Now the free central. In this type, we find that many ovules are freely attached to the central axis. That's why the name is given free central. Example, dianthus prime rose. When the ovules are born on the central axis, septa are present, it is called free central, right? Now the last one that is the basal. Here the placenta develops at the base of the ovary. This is the placenta. It develops at the base of the ovary and a single ovule is attached to it. This is the ovule. Single ovule is attached to it. This type of placentation is called basal placentation. Example, marigold. Placenta develops directly on the thalamus. So, in this video, what we have learned? We have learned the parts of the gynoecium and the placentation, definition of the placentation and the different types of placentation, marginal, axile, parietal, free central, basal. Marginal, that placenta forms a ventral ridge and th through this ridge in two rows ovules are present axial placentation to the central axis uh, inner side uh, in a multilocular ovary ovules are attached we have learned and here uh, parietal presentation ovules are attached to the inner wall at the peripheral side of the ovarian wall and free central ovules are attached freely to the central axis without any chamber and basal placentation placenta develops at the base of the ovary single ovule is attached i hope enjoy you have enjoyed this video isn't isn't it this brings me to the end of this video be enthusiastic be inquisitive and keep learning